my veins I've been driving this train Years in this lane There's no stop in this flame Cause I came to the game And I changed it to play How I like rearranged it to my own domain Yeah, I got what it takes Made lots of mistakes Taking shots, skipping breaks feeling Hey, everybody rough. Welcome back to the garage um, We are uh, in the middle of our Improving engine performance series And uh, we are now going to be tearing apart The short block um, what we're going to be looking at in this episode is obviously we want to see what our piston uh, and cylinder walls are looking like. If there's you know debris where it got embedded into a piston and it tore up a cylinder wall, we want to check that out. Uh, we're also going to check out all our bearings and then we're going to uh, show you guys we're going to make a couple of marks on our timing gear set because we do run a gear drive. It's not the simple, you know, put the dot to the dot and everything like that on there. So uh, we're going to take and put a couple of marks on there. So when we go to degree the cam, um, it's going to save us a little bit of time. We can get it fairly close uh, right away. Um, if you uh, are curious on how to degree a cam like this, um, we do have a video of it. It's going to be right here and I'll put a link down there. So let's go ahead. I got to get this flipped over and we have to start taking the oil pan off. I already went and we've drained all the oil out of it and uh, we've got some plastic bags down because there's no water in this obviously, but there is still gonna be a little bit of oil that isn't gonna come out and it's gonna make a mess on the floor. So do your preventative that way. Get the oil pan off and see what's inside this because we haven't been inside of it in a few months. Gonna be really nice because we're gonna be removing this oil drain because we no longer have the big single up front so we're gonna remove this uh, while we have this apart and put a patch in there well done on both sides uh, this is in the way of this last nut every single time so that's the only one you have to use a wrench on uh, if we would have moved this over before I just didn't think about that so now we'll have to plug that up and we'll have to put two drains in the back tip take off the oil uh, feed line all right so everything in here looks like it should I mean um, we got eight rods we got a crankshaft everything's in there nothing's really blued um, we kind of already knew this was kind of should be pretty good in here since uh, during our uh, the wreck uh, the car shut off right after it had hit the wall so uh, it wasn't still running and everything, but it was running beforehand. Um, and we didn't really see any damage to the engine. Uh, everything else kind of took that impact, but we still have to do our uh, due diligence and check it all over. So let's go ahead and um, turn this for you guys. Try not to step in some of that thick Lucas oil. So you see, uh, this is a billet Bryant crank, um, billet uh, MGP rods, and then we have the billet Gibtech pistons. We're gonna go ahead, go through this, and we're gonna start at the front. We're gonna take out number one, two, three, four, all the way through. We'll be putting it on our piston stand back here. You can get that for yourself. Uh, that is made by All Star, and uh, here is all of the information on it, and I will put a link to it in the description below. So if you want to uh, tear down some engines and everything yourself at your house, go ahead and uh, pick one of those up. It's really nice to have. I've got about four or five of them. So we'll go ahead and start turning things over and get the pistons out of here. And uh, we'll show you guys kind of what we're seeing, the bearings and everything like that. And now you'll see, uh, I'm gonna untorque these by hand. I may actually use the big ratchet on these. Uh, the reason I'm doing that by hand and not with a gun is that way I can feel if there was any stretch um, any yielding or anything like that on these rods or the bolts. Uh, so just a, a tip for you there, if you are going to be tearing down some stuff, make sure you do some of this by hand. To, that way you can double check, hey, did that loosen up a little bit more or was there one that might have been looser than the others? So let's get to it.
flip this over and start taking a look at some of the cylinders. And then we're gonna go ahead and start looking at those bearings and everything else. But we're gonna look at the cylinders first to see if there's any scoring or anything like that. That way we know what to look at on those pistons as well. I like to do it with that. Uh, if there's a bunch of score or marks in the cylinders, uh, then we can go back and find the corresponding piston, see if there's anything wrong with it, um, and then go ahead and look at our bearings and everything else. Then we'll go ahead and get the rest of it out and uh, probably get this block in the hot tank. Okay, so you guys are gonna have to bear with me because I do not have my, uh, a lot of times when I'm doing this, I have a head mount that this will sit on and you guys are just seeing what I see, but I am doing this all by hand right now, so. All right, so we're gonna look inside the cylinders here. Um, we got the flashlight on it. You can see hey, there's a little bit of marks there. Nothing too bad. We can see there was some, looked like some methanol might've sat in the cylinders. We can feel, it's it's not rough really, but it looks very rough. You can even see I even smeared oil on it and it's already looked better. So um, nothing really to see too much there. Here, kind of a little the same, a little bit of, you know, some up and down scoring marks, but nothing terrible. And this is all on this side. We're gonna then go ahead and look at that side in a bit. Uh, this here, so that was uh, one, three, this is five, and five had, was really bad on our leak down, if you remember. Let's go ahead and wipe this down. And this is why we do the leak down, so that way we can come and check all of this. So right there, there is a score in the cylinder. Um, I can, I really can't even feel it with the, my fingernail. I mean, it's just a tiny little blip. So that might clean up with a, a very nice hone. It might even just be just a little bit of a, a on there where a, a glaze break hone may actually clean it up. If not, we can take it to the uh, to a machine shop and just have like half a thou, if that, maybe less, just a, a quick little zip on there. And if we look at the top, I think looks pretty good. There, are a couple of little feels here. Can't even feel that, we're fine. Okay, now let's check the other side. So we got two, four, six and eight on this side you can see right if you look really good like i said bear with me here there's a, like a, a little brown mark that's right there it's like a uh, a line that goes all the way around that's where the piston was sitting um after the uh, engine was pulled um i probably should have tore this engine down a little sooner but just some up and down scrape marks um can't even feel it same here this one has a couple that are a little worse let's get in here yeah, there's one that I can feel very like on the other side so now this is what we're gonna look at this is number uh, six and that was number five over there all right and both of those have a tiny score in the cylinder so very very, very light but why do we have them on both of that and then in here really nothing we'll go ahead and do this one again we're good and we'll look up at the top really nothing Nothing to worry about. I ain't worried, and I ain't worried. So as you see with a engine that has a clockwise rotation, the rod here on the right side, as it's coming up, it's going to be pushing on the outer sleeve or the outside of the block as it's pushing up. And over on the left side here, it's actually gonna be pushing on the inside of the sleeve, pushing up. That's why you're gonna have different wear patterns on each side of the engine when you tear it apart. All right. So you guys know about, you know, how a engine is rotating and where, uh, you know, forces and thrust are being put on uh, the pistons. Um, now this is number six, all right? That's gonna be the one from this side right here. Now, <clears throat> when I went and I looked back at number five and number six, um, those two pistons had the most debris in it from the racetrack, from, from our accident. Um, I'll show you guys right here when the car came around and hit the wall. The turbo was still spinning and we had uh, paint and things like that taken off of the wall and chips and that was all taken in from the turbo and shoved up through the carburetor and down into the engine. Now the engine was shut off pretty quick, but um, I believe those two scoring marks on those cylinders are from some of this debris. When I come up to the camera here, if you look here, you can see all the, the little flakes and everything between the top and the second ring. That is all Brainerd International Raceway sign. 
Now that we've taken a look at our pistons and our cylinder walls, let's go ahead. I'm going to bring you over here. Let's go take a look at the bearings and see what we're seeing on that and maybe what we're going to have to do to correct it. Okay, so you guys are just going to follow along with me here. Um, we have piston number one and number five. Let's go ahead and uh, get going on this. I'm going to grab our egg and uh, pop some bearings. So um, these are, uh, our crankshaft is actually 10 under on the rods. Uh, it has been ground and then it has been re-nitrided. It is a billet Bryant crank, eight counterweight, everything there. Um, take the rod bearing out, rod here, and we'll take the cap bearing out. There we are. So, cap, rod, and zoom in on that. Now you see the hole there? If you guys did not see the Hemi build series we did for, uh, go ahead and check the playlist. Uh, we'll put the link in the description below. Um, the hole that's here is a dowel to make sure that this doesn't move. Uh, since aluminum expands, they have a dowel in it. Now you see there's a lot of like really, it's it's muddy and um, I mean, it's not bad by any means, but it ain't great. Uh, what we're seeing here, some of that um, pitting and on there, that's from uh, methanol being in the oil um, and, and kind of going through it there. That's why we change oil quite often or we would we'll heat it up and try to burn the uh, methanol off. But you can see it hasn't really gotten down. There was a score that went right through here, but it did not go into the cap. So, oh, nope, there's a little bit on the on the top side there, but not too bad. But you see right on the edge, let's, let's zoom in as much as we can. Right on the edge here, you see this copper right along there? It's also on here, right along there. Well, that is actually on. Piston sits in this way. That's on the leading edge going forward. All right, um, what it looks like is it's running into the radius of the crankshaft. Um, with it being a 10 under rod, uh, there was not a whole bunch of options for a narrowed bearing. So what we can see is we have a really big radius on there, which is very good, but we're running into it right here. And uh, we may have to narrow our own bearings for this engine from now on, or see if we can't find a, a, a nice narrow bearing to put in here. Um, Let's grab number five. We'll do the same thing. And ta-da, almost identical. So um, you're also going to have a little bit more, uh, something like this on the rod side or the top, because that is the one that's taking all of the force pushing down as it's coming around. So. Um, a little bit of all of that combined is making those do that, but we do have about 33 or 35 runs on this. Um, we'll still keep these rods as a spare set, but we are gonna put new rods in, new rings, everything, obviously new bearings as well. So there we go. We know what's going on. Nothing too bad. Looks like we don't have to go see the machine shop at all. So that'll be, that's good. Uh, but we will go ahead and run our dingle ball home through it uh, probably tomorrow morning or the day after here. Um, and uh, I, I do, I'm not gonna be in tomorrow. So um, maybe the day after and uh, see if it'll just kind of clean it up. And if we feel anything, if we can still maybe feel a little, we might have to go to that, to go to a machine shop, find somebody that has a torque plate for a Hemi and have that touched up. Uh, but. Let's go ahead, get the uh, front of this torn apart and show you guys marking the uh, timing gear set so that way we can go ahead and tear the rest of it apart. So what I wanna do first here is I wanna verify that right here on our TDC that we're not gonna be on a lobe or a lift. Now, the reason we wanna have that on TDC and we know where it's at is we can go ahead and um, mark everything so when we set this back to top dead center on compression stroke we can get all of our marks and everything as close as possible to put this back together so we're going to start with that we're going to go ahead and tear everything off the front here take that off and um, then you guys will be able to see kind of what's inside everything kind of goes together all as one piece um, 
So it is kind of tough. We'll take the balancer off and then I can take this uh, cam cover off here and we can see the cam, the gears and everything like that. And we'll go ahead and be able to mark a few of them that way. So I got the bouncer off. I went ahead and pulled this plate off and um, we are on top dead center right here. Um, and we can see we have, looks like I had a couple of marks there. We're gonna wipe it off. Uh, Cause it looks like it was just some paint or something. We're gonna go ahead and put a nice scribe in there. Um, here and here, basically put our own dots in, in this. Uh, the reason we're going to do that, when we know that this is at top dead center, our crankshaft, uh, we can line up that dot here and this dot here, and now we should go back in exactly where we were. Um, might have a little bit of adjustment here, but we're not making any cam adjustments on this, and we're not making any crank adjustments, so it should just go right back in and be completely fine. But to save ourselves the time of having to do everything, so we only have to maybe just put the degree wheel on and check it once, um, we're gonna go ahead, put some marks on here, and pull everything off. Okay, so camshaft's out, everything's out. All we have left is the crankshaft to uh, get pulled out of here. Now, um, on these, uh, it's considered a Y block. Now, the downside of it is the caps coming down and being cross bolted when you take everything out of here. They have a really big press fit and they're very difficult to get out. So we actually have holes. Um, we have the holes in the caps here. So what we'll do um, is we take everything off. Well, we have a, uh, a rod. Uh, it's kind of like a bolt rod deal that we can then use and it'll pull it up and off there. Um, fortunately, uh, that tool is at my house and um, can't, uh, can't pull that out right now. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you guys uh, what happens after I pull it out here um, on the next episode. So thank you guys for watching and subscribing. Um, if you haven't yet, uh, throw a comment below. Tell me what you liked and what you wanna see next on this. Um, we're going to be going through and on our next episode when I pull the crank out, I'm going to show you guys what we're going to be changing and why um, and uh, moving forward on getting this ready to be reassembled. So let me know what on that you would like to see. We have done our assembly videos uh, before, so we're probably going to you know speed through that one pretty quick this time. But if there's something specific you do want to see, drop me a comment. While you're at it, hit that subscribe button, visit the website, and until next time, be safe out there guys. In my veins, I've been driving this train Years in this lane, there's no stopping this flame Cause I came to the game and I changed it to play How I like rearranged it to my own domain Yeah, I got what it takes, made lots of mistakes Taking shots, skipping breaks, feeling lost feeling